welcome to our Science Week website. My name is Sue McGrath. I am a scientist. I'm going to take you through a whole range of silly experiments that you can do at home or at school to encourage you to play with science because science, folks, is fun. Enjoy. Right, now we're looking at uh, Science Week and we want to do lots of science magic. So what we're going to do is look at the trick that parents are going to dread you doing. Okay, so Donal is going to be my assistant today and Donal is going to show that it is possible to pull the tablecloth from underneath a full set of crockery. So you're ready for this. Knuckles up, <laughs> look at the tablecloth and we're going to go three, two, one, pull! Oh, fantastic, well done. In this experiment, we look at a very famous scientist called Newton. He was born over 300 years ago, so obviously he's dead now, but we're still using all of his laws. And one of the laws is his first law of motion. And that states that stationary objects, that's objects that are not moving, want to stay stationary. And the heavier they are, the more stubborn they are to movement. And that stubbornness we uh, refer to as inertia. Now we're going to try something a little bit more dangerous. We're going to see if the physics works in all situations. Now remember, you're pulling and pulling and pulling. And you can move backwards in the pull, all right? So knuckles back. Three, two, one, pull! Yes! <laughs> What I have here is a mock-up model of my ear. And I found out that as I've got older, I'm actually losing my hearing. I'm a little bit deaf. The doctor gave me these drops. So I, I looked at this and it went hydrogen peroxide. I thought, ah, this is where my chemistry comes in handy because I have some hydrogen peroxide. Now hydrogen peroxide is very similar to water. Now water is a small molecule. It's made up of three atoms two hydrogen and one oxygen. And so if you look at it, it looks a bit like Mickey Mouse's face. The hydrogen peroxide has an extra oxygen. So there are four atoms, two oxygen, two hydrogen. And it's not happy being in that state. It wants to split up. So in this experiment, we're going to see how the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, that means it's going to break down into oxygen and water, helps me remove the wax from my ear. So Jenna, first of all, what I want you to do is to put some of this lovely yellow liquid into my ear so that at, that's going to act like our wax. And now, I'm going to pour in some of our hydrogen peroxide. So this is going to be like the drops going into my ear. So the hydrogen peroxide goes in. And we're going to watch. Unfortunately for us, Jenna, it's a very slow reaction. And it's very boring. And we don't want that in chemistry. We're kind of very hungry for lots of excitement. So we're going to cheat or Jenna's going to cheat for me. But to do this, Jenna, this is a bit dangerous. I'm going to need you, first of all, to put on some safety glasses. Can you put those on for me, please? So what we're going to do is we're going to add some powder into the hydrogen peroxide, and it's going to speed up that decomposition. It doesn't take part in the reaction, uh, but it speeds it up, so we call it a catalyst. And so Jenna, what I want you to do, very carefully, you're going to get an amount of the crystals on the spoon, and then you're going to put them in into the ear and then you're going to step back. Out comes the wax. Oh my goodness! This is why I couldn't hear. Look at the amount of wax in my ears. Oh my word! <laughs> Phew! What a fantastic experiment. Now, can you see all of this steam? Jenna, would you put your, take one of your hands out the glove. Can you put your hand there? Can you feel that heat? What we have here is an experiment that is so hot, the water has turned into water vapour. And we call that an exothermic reaction because it's given out lots and lots of heat energy. What I'd like you to do is I want you to hold the bottle for me, please. Now, because there's a little bit of danger here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some safety glasses on you, okay? So here's our glasses, all right, on go the glasses, because we don't really know what's going to happen. 
fantastic. Now what I'd like you to do then, is I want you to lift up the balloon and let all of the powder react with the liquid. Can you do that for me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Oh, look at that. The fizz is made and now it's being trapped in the balloon. And the balloon is really good because it stretches and stretches and stretches. Now the question is, is this gas explosive? I don't know. You don't know. Before we find out, I think I should show you an explosive gas in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a gas that I use in my lighters. It's butane gas. We're only going to use a small amount. And notice that I've got a small amount and Stephen has a huge amount of gas. Inside this canister, I've got another gas trapped. Can you take a big deep breath in for me, Stephen? And those of you at home, <gasps> breathe in and then out. <sighs> what gas have we just breathed in? Oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen is one of the gases that we have in the air. And we need oxygen for an explosion. For another thing we need for an explosion is a fuel. So here we've put the fuel into the canister. I've got two sides of a fire triangle filled now. I've got oxygen and I've got a fuel. And we're not going to get any fires or explosions unless we have the third side and that's going to give us some heat. So we can get heat from a flame or heat from a spark. So Stephen, I'm going to get you to count me in. You go three, two, one and I'll click the clicker. You ready? Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> so Stephen, we now need to find out if this gas is explosive. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to hold it by the bottle there in front of you. And because whenever I'm going through experiments, I want to make sure that I'm very safe. Right? I've got the fire lit there. Hold the balloon up nice and front high. I'm going to stand all the way over here while I'm getting this to explode. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Apart from getting covered in powder, did we see any fire energy there? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. So, that gas is not explosive. In fact, this is the gas that we have in our fizzy drinks, and it's called carbon dioxide. And we also find carbon dioxide in fire extinguishers, because it's actually quite a heavy gas. So whenever we put the fire extinguisher with the fire, it, goes over the fire like a blanket, stops the oxygen from coming in, which means we have no more fire. Well folks, hopefully these experiments have uh, filled you with a desire to do them at home or at school yourselves. Remember, science is the future. Science is fun!